Hello, hello, hello everyone. It's Angela and welcome back to my channel. So we are at Starlight Drive-In again, working on our Raider Town. And as you can see, I am putting up some scaffolding, like I mentioned I was gonna do in the last video. I wanted to make sure that my settlers didn't keep getting stuck on my roof up there. Uh, and then I also think I'm gonna add something up there a little bit later, but um, figured I would go ahead and do this right now. Nice and easy, something uh, something quick to open the video with. So while I am doing that, I'm also going to talk a little bit about what this build is today. As I was walking through, uh, walking around this town, trying to decide what stores um, and places of business I wanted, I decided that I wanted something big and flashy up on that um, kind of extended wing of this projector building and I decided to go ahead with a brothel because it uh, definitely would be front and center I feel like in a town like this um, there's not gonna be a lot of trading going on or anything so you know they've got to make money somehow the story that I've kind of come up with as I was decorating the brothel for the tour that you guys will see a little bit later in the video it is run by a woman named Rosemary. Uh, the rest of the girls that work there um, and the raiders that work there call her Madam Rosemary. So that's the name of our brothel. And she, um, she runs a tight ship, I will say. She keeps the place nice and clean. She keeps it very attractive. Um, there's lots and lots to do there. And I kind of have it set in my mind that she used to be an operator or she still is an operator um, or was part of that faction of raiders. And that's why she does such a good job <laughs> keeping the place, you know, in tip top shape because she wants to make those caps. And what better way to make caps than to provide a service, I suppose you could say. We're gonna finish up our scaffolding here really quick, and then we're gonna get right into it. I think this town is gonna to turn out really cool. It's already looking really, really awesome. Um, you guys will see at the end of the tour, it's definitely coming together. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm not sure how much room I still have to build with, um, but I guess worst case scenario, if I run out of room and my game starts crashing all the time, I can just, you know, call this a full-fledged raider town and, you know, be done with it. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen though. I want to, I want to see this through and, you know, see my actual idea <laughs> come to fruition. All right, so we've got uh, this floor and roof part that I am kind of just trying to I'm going to end up snapping everything off of. Um, I wanted this place to feel a little bit cozy, but also big enough that obviously there's going to be a few different rooms and places for customers to sort of enjoy themselves. And this piece um, will end up being moved somewhere else, but I do add this wall in here and then uh, a doorway. So this doorway is kind of the side doorway that leads over to the other side of the settlement. So you don't have to walk all the way around, even though my settlers do anyway. <laughs> so we're gonna add that right in there. Perfect. And then we're gonna add in our flooring. So here we go, we're getting to the real part of the building. Um, and again, I used a lot of these prefabs, uh, just the walls, the outer caps, um, but I did try to use a, use some that I hadn't used before and try to mix it up a little bit, uh, mostly because a lot of these have that perfect, really shabby build that I'm going for in this uh, particular settlement. And, uh, you know, it caters exactly to how lazy I really am. So we're gonna put some floors in here and then add some more of those outer caps and uh, some walls, you know, to give it some shape because it's kind of hanging off the edge there and I want it to be visually interesting. So we're gonna move that over into place, kind of keep the gap out of the floor there. And then 
we're gonna go in and add some more of these shack pieces. Over in this section, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it, but ultimately I decided that it's gonna be sort of a, a guard station kind of thing, somewhere for maybe a bouncer for the club to sit, um, you know, make sure that uh, people aren't, kind of do double duty um, <laughs> as a bouncer for the club and also to make sure that, you know, other people coming into town aren't coming in to, uh, to ruin the town because, you know, there are raiders. They've got to, you know, protect their, their turf. So I figured that would be a nice place to put somebody. Um, and it is overlooking, at the moment it's overlooking the garden, but there is going to be something else there. Um, I've tried to decide what different uh, shops and businesses I want to have in here. And I think that garden is going to become something that has to do with the rust devils. Because I really like their sort of crazy robot decoration. <laughs> so I decided that I think I want to put something over there. Even though most of the time the raider factions don't usually get along very well. Uh, but Madame Rosemary here is an operator, so obviously that's kind of out of the out the window. So um, here I'm adding in these windows uh, because I wanted this place to have sort of an inviting feel and have it be, at least in the lounge areas, have it be open um, for maybe the girls to call out to people on the street uh, or maybe people can hear, you know, the music and the laughter and, you know, everyone drinking and having a good time upstairs and maybe it invites them in and wants, makes them want to be up there as well. So that's kind of uh, the idea behind all the open windows in a brothel, <laughs> but it uh, kind of has like an Old West sort of feel uh, if you think about it that way. It always comes back to New Vegas. Always. <laughs> Here we're adding in some scaffolding, uh, mostly for supports, but I also wanted to add something on the front um, so that I could put up some decorations um, to kind of call people in and welcome people in. There's one of the scaffolding pieces. Um, and then over in this section, we're going to add in a little bit of flooring uh, so that this kind of becomes a a little bit more of a walkway because there are those plywood pieces but I do want there to be a little bit of like decking maybe that kind of connects to this sort of outer piece uh, where the scaffolding and the shack bridge kind of meet the front of the building so I wanted that to feel very conjoined for lack of a better word, I suppose. And then this middle section did not look supported to me, so we get some more scaffolding, of course. We're gonna add in some flooring and make it look all connected and uh, very sort of ramshackle walkway, which is kind of the, the theme with this entire build, is sort of just ramshackle, <laughs> built however, out of whatever, you know. I like that floor the the best out of all of the uh, the scaffolding floors. Just looks like planks. I think that looks really cool. And boom, done. All right, so now we're gonna add in some of these support beams for that deck up above that I was just saying or just telling you guys about. And this part looked turned out really cool because it kind of it's like they nailed them into that uh, the siding of this building. So it definitely turned out awesome. This build is definitely surprising me so far with, uh, I just, I love the challenge of being able to build into and around existing buildings. Um, and I think that that's probably why I haven't done a whole lot uh, in some of the, uh, some of the builds, build areas that we have. That's probably why I picked Jamaica Plain, because there were already existing buildings and I could just sort of make it my own. So it's definitely turning out way cooler than I anticipated. I hope that the settler side turns out this cool. I do sort of have some ideas for how I'm going to make it look different. Uh, so 
I'm really crossing my fingers that my build limit holds up. So up here we're going to add in some of this plywood and uh, just sort of close off that gap there and make it, you know, seem a little bit safer. I'm not sure if it actually is any safer, but it looks a little bit safer. And I realized after the fact that I picked the same exact plywood that was already up there. But we sort of hide it. So it's okay. And I gotta get it just so you guys know exactly how I build. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So let's go on upstairs. Uh, actually, I lied. We're not going to go upstairs yet. we got to make the stairs first. Um, <laughs> we're going to put this railing in first, and then we're going to make our corner stairs. Perfect. All right, so stairs time. Let's put in some upper floors, and then um, you guys will notice that my type of stairs makes another appearance. Um, I really, really enjoy using these, the sort of right angle stairs. Um, <laughs> I guess it's sort of part of my style. I don't know if I even really have a style, but uh, I use these kinds of stairs all the time because I think they look nice and they're easy to fit into a small building like this. So, uh, gonna try to find a floor that will work here. One of these smaller floors works just fine. And then we're gonna put some warehouse stairs right in there. They glitch through the floor, but that's okay because you can't see them from the outside. And then the shack, the shack upper floor, I realize, is snapping to this way crooked wall that I have. So I thought maybe I could just sort of, uh, place anywhere, uh, put it into place, but I can't do that because it's going to continue to snap onto that wall um, and just be a nuisance. So we're going to end up having to take the wall out <laughs> and then just uh, snap it into place since the offender is out of the picture now. There we go. All right. So we're going to put that wall back in real quick and then we're going to go ahead and... Uh, if I can get up the stairs there, we're going to go ahead and add in our walls up on the second level. And uh, some of the rooms start to kind of take shape. So there's going to be a room in this corner over here. And uh, that open area turned out really, really cool because it is kind of open to the outside. Um, I imagine it would suck really bad in the winter, but not really much you can do about it, I guess. <laughs> And here's the other side. Um, I tried to mix in some of the just plain walls with some of these uh, outer caps and uh, the shack like wall roof open things. Um, that part with the uh, that I'm putting in now, this is going to become sort of a lounge area. And then this corner over here is going to be another room. But we're going to put this doorway in first for this little deck that I put up there. Um, Mostly as like a, a smoking kind of deck or uh, maybe a deck that leads to other building, uh, other buildings in the, uh, in the city. And of course this wall won't snap in here, so we're gonna have to place it anywhere. I found out the hard way uh, <laughs> how reliant I am upon Place Anywhere. Uh, in this next section after this, you will see that uh, I have to use the pillar because I got into such a building zone that I <laughs> ended up not saving my game for like, gosh, I don't even know. It was a ridiculously long amount of time, uh, longer than I normally go, and uh, I lost everything because it something in this back corner uh over by this by the nuka cherry sign kind of in the the front part of 
Starlight Drive-In over here, something in that area does not go with my my place anywhere. It They don't play well, something's going on over there. And so I, my game froze as I was trying to put some supports in underneath the, uh, the other side of the, the brothel. So here's the section here that I was just talking about uh, with the, the, the pillar. So I lost all of my progress that I had done uh, after my scaffolding stairs at the beginning of the video. So I had to redo the entire brothel. <laughs> um, I was so mad. I was, I was furious. Uh, some of you guys might have seen on my Twitter that I was just, I was done. <laughs> so here I'm trying to see uh, where my, my thing is. It takes me like twice as long to put stuff in here with the pillar because I I have to rely on the pillar and I don't know I have no idea how I did it before um, I've just become so reliant on place anywhere now I suppose I could go back if I needed to go back like here this entire the, the last part of the build was done with uh, with just like rug glitching and pillar glitching but I, I hate it <laughs> I don't want to do it um, but finally, third time's a charm, I do get this in here uh, well enough that it seems like it's supported at least. Um, and this underneath part is looks a little bit bare, but it is going to be filled in in the future. So um, I did add in some doors and stuff as I was rebuilding, some doorways, so I'm giving you guys a little bit of a glimpse at that. And then this is... Uh, doing some finishing touches here so we're adding a little railing in here so someone people don't fall down the stairs and then we're gonna add a door here and then we are going to add in uh, supports for our stairs our stair platform I'm trying to decide on the door I think that one works best so then uh, this part I actually thought turned out really really cool I have been wanting to use something a little bit different for the stair platforms and I've been really enjoying using the concrete blocks or the cinder blocks um, so I decided to go ahead and use this as supports for the stairs I'm not sure if it's actually very supportive but it looks kind of cool and different so we're gonna put that in perfect and here we go here is the tour. So this is Madame Rosemary's. You can see we've got some decoration on the front here, some of those marquee signs, lots of neon lettering. Um, you can't really see the lights very well because it is still sort of light out. I didn't want it to be completely dark when I did the tour, but um, rest assured it looks pretty dang awesome with like the spotlights and stuff. I've put some spotlights in there on the mannequins and it looks really nice. So here we go. We're going to go in this side entrance here. Uh, opens right up into the club uh, kind of lounge area. Madame Rosemary's over there on the left taking names and directing people. We've got our bartender ready to serve some drinks and we've got our lounge area. Um, I liked the addition of the cage. I'm not sure if it's going to be used for dancing or for other things. It is a raider settlement after all so you know never put it past them. This is room number one. Uh, I imagine someone's already got this room um, so that they can accept customers. Uh, it's very girly, very, <laughs> very pink. Um, each of the rooms I really want to try to do a different theme. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do in this one yet. Uh, no one has taken this room yet so uh, it's got some pretty basic furniture in there but I think I'm gonna try to put in some blue lights or something to kind of offset all of that pink and then out here is our little guard area uh, for our bouncer they don't really have to do a whole lot of work because they've got a turret but upstairs is uh, more lounge areas um, at night it's a lot darker in here uh, a little bit sketch but uh, I think that's the nature of a brothel. This statue <laughs> I thought was kind of funny. Um, it seemed like it may have fit the, uh, the raider atmosphere of the brothel. Um, but you get some really cool views out these side openings over here. 
And you can see from some of the decorations that Madame Rosemary is in fact part of the operators. This room has been rented uh, by a worker who is into some very dark things. A little bit, a uh, little risque. Got a customer in here, we're just gonna leave you alone. Not sure if I wanna know what goes on in there. And then room number four um, hasn't been decorated yet, but it has a nice big double bed, so, you know. It's gonna be a little bit romantic, I think. All right, so this is the kind of porch entryway over here. And I think Madame Rosemary's gonna get her own personal apartment, kind of off of, branching off of this in a future episode. We might do some apartments upstairs as well um, that these stairs are leading to, kind of crossing over onto the other side of the settlement there. And that is our brothel. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Um, I tried not to go too over the top with the decorating, um, but I did want to put something in here to give it a little bit of atmosphere. I really, really enjoy um, making clubs and, you know, bars and the like. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, it's the colored lights. They draw me in. The colored lights and the neon. <laughs> so let's go take a look at it from this back side here um, that you can see from the road. Added some spikes in here for some visual interest, but we've got some more neon lights, some signs advertising drinks and uh, dancing. And I think it looks really cool with that pink light coming through there. Let's go around the other side. We're going to take a, a parting look at our progress so far. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Twitter to see what I'm up to, I am CW Courier. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.